Hey Nick, how are you? Good, how are you? Cool, I'm doing excellent. Good. Um, is, is this your first time at, in, uh, at Primavera? First time at Primavera. Okay, awesome. Do you have any expectations for this show? Have you heard about Primavera Sound, I'm sure? I have very low expectations. <laughs> always? I, I imagine always. <laughs> awesome. I have to keep my uh, hopes, uh, you know, at a very low level. I've been humbled. Okay. I, I assume okay. it'll rain and there'll be like 20 people watching. <laughs> I don't know. It's just what I'm imagining. And then it becomes amazing. There's a possibility of becoming amazing. Right? No. No, never. <laughs> never. No. <laughs> the Shotgun Vision song, is it about like having the, someone having the power to really aim at your weak points, for instance? It seems that, me to, that it's about that to me. I like that. No. Your interpretation is going to be more interesting than mine. Okay. I don't know what it what it's about. It was okay. I was I don't know. I was feeling something. I wrote that song seven years ago, so I don't remember. Why has it only come out this uh, on this album? Because it seems that it's been around even on YouTube and stuff like yeah. that. You've been played you've been playing it for uh, quite a few uh, shows and stuff. Yeah, I guess I think it's a good song, and I feel like it deserved it felt like it deserved to be on an album at some point. It just didn't belong on the past three albums. Okay. Vapors, uh, Asleep and a Forgetting, I guess just the last two albums. It was like, it didn't seem like it fit on those albums. Okay. Stylistically or thematically. Oh, okay. It was aesthetically right for Ski Mask, uh -huh. you know. Do you have a lot of uh, backlog uh, songs such, such as that? Like the stuff that you, have, you just haven't uh, released? I do, but a lot of them I'll just let go and forget about. But s certain songs, if I feel like I'm still interested in them years later, then I'll I'll include them. Okay, cool. But I, yeah. But there are lots that I've just let go and uh, uh, okay. said said goodbye to. Okay. Curiously enough, uh, I've seen you say that 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 like every once in a while or every every time you release an album or or something or you just uh, kind of release them, release the songs, and try to play the new songs like yeah. the more more or less of a clean slate. Yeah. So this is a bit of a specific question, but for instance, uh, I because you have a big uh, connection to comedy things, uh, is that like the clean slate technique? Is uh, similar to the clean slate technique of Louis C.K. For instance, like he does his special and then throws everything away and then just basically does new things. No, but I like that. I think it's just about being engaged and being interested, and mm -hmm. you know, that, like I said, Shotgun Vision is seven years old and. I'm ready to play something else. Okay, okay. So I'll get, you know, I'll give people what they want to a, to a degree, but it's more interesting for me to play the new song. We're doing one new, brand new song today cool. um, called Snowflake that will most likely be on the next album. Awesome. Um, and I'm sure by the time that album comes out, I'll be sick to death of it and won't <laughs> want to play it anymore. Yeah, yeah, but okay, yeah. How long is the lifespan of a song usually for you? I mean, we play we play songs off the first record. You know, Swans is we're gonna play today, and it's the best, probably the best song I've ever written. So <laughs> I have to acknowledge that. It's still uh, over in the heart. Yeah, yeah, it still means something. Okay. Yeah, as long as the song still has some meaning. I mean, like I said, Shotgun Vision. I don't really. Rem I mean, I sort of remember what I was feeling. I was just feeling kind of angry, but also. What did you say? I liked your uh, interpretation. <laughs> it's like uh, someone who just knows your weak spots. It's just like shotgun vision, like pow. Yeah, yeah. I knew someone's weak spot. I okay. think I was, I was acknowledging someone else's. Okay. I was letting someone else know that I that I knew their f f uh, fallibility. Okay. Fallibility. Yeah. Wow. Excellent. No, no. It's, I think it's. it's yeah. <laughs> I think it's work. You're good friends with Kurt Brownell, right? Yeah, I'm a I'm a big fan. Oh, cool. uh, have you seen the the the, the thing, uh, the goats thing, the let's get w let's get wet for goats? I have. I don't understand what that is. I've seen some of the videos on Instagram, but I don't understand what he's doing. Um, I just I was just checking because I w wasn't understanding because it's kind of hard because it's like he has this T-shirt with like uh, uh, yeah, it has a tuxedo. I saw I saw that saw that as well. But he has the the, the this T-shirt. He's printed out like 500 goats and a uh, thousand chickens. 
equals jet ski. So basically what he's doing is like to, uh, he wants to send 500 uh, goats and a uh, thousand chickens to Africa for them to, for people, for families to have cheese and access to milk and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, uh, stuff like, uh, like yeah. produce pr sure, from, sure, from, sure. from, from the animals. Yeah. Uh, so for that, he's uh, crossing, uh, uh, by jet, on jet ski, he's going from uh, Chicago to New Orleans. So that's a Kickstarter campaign. So there you go. Good. He did the Kickstarter campaign with the skywriting too. And yeah, how how do I land? Yeah, it's awesome. I awesome. saw that in real life. I was at the party where it where it happened, and it was very underwhelming. <laughs> yeah, I heard I heard you on this podcast on Get Lost. Oh yeah, that was you went on a cemetery. Well, how was that like? Uh, it was scary. I find cemeteries really? very scary. Mm. It just reminds me of my own mortality. So oh. I don't like that. Okay. okay. I prefer to think uh, that I'm gonna live forever okay yeah me too me too me too even though they're pretty pretty they're very beautiful sometimes. we did take a piss Kurt and I on, in, a, <laughs> really? in the grave in the cemetery it seemed punk it seemed real punk was that on record I don't recall I think we turned the, the, the thing off okay, okay yeah okay. the sound of piss is yeah, really it's pissing. not a good sound the sound of no. pissing very punk yeah <laughs> totally <laughs> You've been on also on uh, on some earwolf uh, on some earwolf things like mm -hmm. uh, how how is it like being on Who Charted, for instance? <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Who Charted, Analyze Fish. I haven't heard of the Analyze Fish one yet. <clears throat> yeah. It's great, it's especially if you especially if you hate fish. <laughs> uh, it's good, I think. For, if you like me and you hate fish, then it's good. So Harris just puts himself on the spot, really. Right? Yeah, it's okay. kind of Harris Whittles. Uh, he's the author of the, the podcast. Yeah. And humble brag. Yeah, humble it's brag. it's a brave it's a brave thing to do yeah so uh, yeah I live in LA I don't know I just oh, I see those people all, all the time okay. so they sometimes will ask me to be on their podcast mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah. just fun so you're just in the in the in the in the, in the biz <laughs> I don't know if I'm not, I'm not in the <laughs> biz but well, I'm in the circle in the circle yeah biz circle, biz circle yeah. The cool, in the cool circle yeah, yeah, yeah very cool very, very cool They're those very are cool. very cool people <laughs> What's going on on the cover of Ski Mask? That looks like a uh, licorice, and I love the fonts. Mm. Thanks, I drew the font. Really? Yeah. yeah well, I uh, the the island's font is um, Albertus, which is John Carpenter's font he used for everything, and uh, and then the Ski Mask font itself, I just hand drew. It was like melting bubble gum, basically. Um, the cover is from an '80s, really B-grade '80s horror film called. Mm. A Ozone Attack of the Redneck Mutants. Oh, okay. So I came across this image online, and then I f tracked down the film, and then I tracked down the director, and I asked him if I could use it, and he he allowed it. How did you find that that move? A lot of googling, Google image. You know, took me to a Flickr page. Flickr page took me to this email address. Guy told me the name of the film. I went to IMDb. I found the film. I found the director. Googled him. Found some weird business that he ran. And then um, found his email address through that. And then emailed him. So if you're like, if you if you're into those movies, there's a really cool uh, way to find like very odd movies. Even though you have to, you might not want to hear the riffing. But it's like a mystery science theater. 3000 yeah there's, there's yeah there are a lot of cool stuff yeah they, they seem to it's the similar quality cool I thought yeah. so I thought it was yeah, well. yeah, yeah have you seen the room for instance yes so good yes so brilliantly yes and yeah after last summer or two it was really horrible and uh, hard, to con hard to get to Hawaii that's awesome I don't know oh, yeah. that one that, that's really good okay and oh uh, Birdemic 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 is so cool there's also this guy he makes these movies um um, I forget what his name is. God, uh, D Breen, Neil Breen, B R E E N. You gotta check mm, him out. Okay. He's I forget the name of his movies, but I watched one. He's always got like three laptops. None of them work. They're all broken, and he's got five flip phones, and he's pretending to be like a secret agent. Uh, it's sad. Okay. It's oh, very sad. Okay. Yeah. Still on MS DOS and stuff. Yeah. Well, they're not even. They don't even work. Oh. Computers, okay. So. They're just. Imagine <laughs> uh, that they're MS DOS. Yeah. Okay.